continuity is the cornerstone of every DevOps strategy and DevOps calls for the process continuity in the form of continuous integration, continuous delivery and continuous deployment. So it's really common that people tend to use these terms continuous delivery and continuous deployment interchangeably, but they often get confused between them. So today I'm going to compare these two highly conflicted terms in the industry. So hello everyone. This is Sahidi on behalf of Eddie Reka and I'll be walking you through this session on differences between continuous delivery and continuous deployment. So starting with today's session, let me first brief you on DevOps. So now what is DevOps? Well, DevOps is basically a software development strategy which bridges the gap between the dev side and the op side of the company. So in simple words, we can say that DevOps is a software methodology which involves all the steps from continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration, continuous deployment and continuous monitoring throughout its development life cycle. So it involves all the steps from building, testing, compiling the code and then finally putting on to the production servers. Now let me explain you in much simpler terms. Basically DevOps is how do I as a developer get a new feature or any new idea or any enhancement request or maybe it could be a capability change out to the production so that all my customers can give me some feedback. Now when we get this feedback based on this feedback we can improve it right now. What will I improve as a developer? What all should I improve? Well, you basically have to improve three important factors. First thing to improve is the software which the team is delivering. So basically we have to improve the quality of the software. Second thing to improve is the environment to which we are delivering the software. Now when I'm talking about delivering the software, I'm basically talking about the efficiency and the performance of the environment to basically which we deliver the software, right? And the third thing that we can improve is making the delivering process of the software more efficient, capable, faster and at a really low cost. So as I was telling you, these are the three important factors that you can improve. So when we are delivering the software, it's not that we are just delivering it directly to the production site, right? So basically when we deliver the software, there's an entire software delivery life cycle with multiple number of environments, which is known as the delivery pipeline. So as you can see here, the developers first build the software and then before they deliver it to the environment, the software is probably stored in the software configuration management or as you know, the version control system. After you build your product, what happens is you have a QA environment. Now what QA environment is nothing but the quality assurance environment. Now what happens with quality assurance environment is that they basically test the quality of your build product. After you have the QA environments, then we have several pre-production and production environments like the integration testing, the user acceptance testing and then finally it is deployed onto the production server. Now let me tell you one thing here. Now the number of tests that you have in your is not specific. It it is basically dependent on how your organization is structured, how your delivery pipeline is structured or like how many environments do you have? So it's not specific to a particular number of tests. Each organization can have n number of tests depending on the product they're working on, depending on the environments they're working on and so on. And then finally after so many stages are done, we have the production stage. Now this is the stage where basically your software actually runs and then customers interact with it. They use it and then they give you the feedback in which you can improve. So this is where you want your software to perform. So suppose any customer gives a bad feedback, then it is the responsibility of the complete team working on that product to improve on that particular feedback and then deploy the change again. Now when you deploy software like from one environment that is from the environment where the developers are making the changes to the environment where the customer is working then we need some automation here. It has to happen really fast so that you know the customer is also happy and also the business requirements are met whenever it is needed. Now the reason that you need automation is because now when we deploy this software it needs orchestration. Now when I talk about orchestration, I mean timing. So I mean the coordination between all the teams working together so that we deploy the product on the production servers on time. 
but when you're deploying something you're not just deploying the software as I just mentioned right you're also deploying the complete environment it could be either the physical environment or the virtual environment or the environment in the cloud that can be already provisioned and if it is not provisioned then you have to also provide that particular environment to the customers right so maybe all the environments that you're working in are same but the configuration changes always change so the configuration changes in the dev side where the developers are working will be very much different from the configuration changes in quality assurance team and also the configuration changes where the customer is working with that product will also be really different now to match all these stages and to have all the configurations matched and you know to work in a good way we need automated deployment as it is the ability to get the software deployed to any particular environment at any given time so you have to have that capability to deploy that particular software at any time at any environment so that anybody can work anytime a customer has any problem he can revert back with the feedback and the dev side of the company can work with that problem and then again deploy that change so continuous delivery is that capability to deploy the software to any particular environment at any given time so this is that capability which allows the complete team and the customers to coordinate in a really good manner and then make the changes that are required so continuous delivery is not an option but it is a must if you want to do devops now the other term in industry which sometimes causes confusion is the term continuous deployment so now you might have heard about you know large companies right so if you talk about these large companies they talk about how many changes they deploy every day so these changes go all the way to the production like they talk about 50 60 deployments per week or even more than that sometimes now you might be wondering here how are they deploying so many times a week so what's happening here is basically any change that a developer makes gets deployed all the way to the production and this is nothing but continuous deployment so any small change a developer makes is directly deployed onto the prod servers. This is nothing but continuous deployment by which these large MNC companies sometimes say that you know they've done 50 60 deployments per week. So now that you've got an idea of what continuous delivery is and what continuous deployment is let me deep dive into continuous delivery first. So as I was mentioning before continuous delivery is a software development discipline where you build software in such a way that that the software can be released to the production at any given time. You know you achieve the continuous delivery by continuously integrating the software done by the development team building executables and then running all the automated tests on those executable files to detect all the problems after you know you're done with all this you push these executable files into the increasing production like environments to ensure that the software will work in production now this is where continuous delivery stops and this is where the process stops until the business requests make the change so in continuous delivery the process runs from you know the team building the software building the executables and then running automated tests on those executable files and they're just pushing those executable files into the production like environment they are actually not deploying it onto the prod servers so the value of continuous delivery lies in the fact that the code is ready to be deployed all the times so anytime you want the code to be deployed you just have to you know manually approve that code and then it will get deployed onto the prod servers so the quality assurance teams automatically test each and every build in the environment and then if it passes those tests the code is ready to be deployed so as you can see here the quality assurance team tests if each and every feature is working or not and if the feature is working then they manually deploy it to the production based on the need of the businesses and if any feature is not working then it is sent back to the teams so that they can work on that particular feature fix that particular bug and then it is deployed onto the production side now this increases the quality and the velocity and also makes the team more efficient so guys that was what continuous delivery is so it just has one step that has to be manually done that is deploying onto the production servers now coming to the second term that is continuous deployment 
Now let me tell you how continuous deployment is different from continuous delivery. Continuous deployment means that every change goes through the pipeline and if it passes all the tests, it is automatically deployed onto the production servers. So there is no requirement of manual approval here. Any change that the dev side of the team does, it is directly deployed onto the production servers. Now with this approach, the quality of the software release completely depends on the quality of the test suit as everything is automated here. So there is no requirement of any manual approval here. So let me give you an example here. So suppose you have a test suit for a function and that function stands good for like 20 conditions or like 20 cases that you have tested. Then in continuous delivery, a manual test can be performed to check the quality of the function. So if anybody finds out that there could be more cases included in that particular function, then it would be not deployed onto the production servers. Instead, it will go back to the team. They'll include more changes, more cases into it, and then it will be manually approved to deploy it onto the production servers. But also remember that continuous delivery means you can deploy frequently, but the pace of the change is set by the business demand. Now, what I mean by this line is suppose there's any change in the business requirement then they can send that particular requirement to the dev team. You know that dev team will build the complete requirement and it will pass through all the stages and only when the business people want it to be, you know, out in the market, only then it is deployed onto the prod servers. So if we have to summarize in a single line, then in the world of continuous deployment, there's no release approval or, you know, there's no change approval board or you can also say that the code moves automatically from the developer side to the production side, which is not the case in continuous delivery. Now it is really evident that we should not use continuous deployment as we need to consider many factors before releasing the software. Like you have to consider the channel and the supplier support, the trade shows, the market events and the compliance demands and everything, right? So you have to consider this marketing factor before you release your product to the world. But we must do continuous delivery so that you have the capability to deliver the software to any given environment at any time as needed. So anytime you need any particular product, you should have that capability to deliver that particular product at that particular time. Now after discussing so much about continuous delivery and continuous deployment, you might be wondering is there any case of continuous deployment with continuous delivery? So there are few cases where you use both of them together. So now let me show you one case. So consider a large corporation like this large corporation makes record kind of applications and they deliver only few releases per year. Now you might be wondering here when they release only few releases per year. Why do they need continuous delivery? Well, they need in a situation when they find a bug in the field by a user and then they have to recreate that bug as quickly as possible so that you know they can fix it as this is with continuous delivery. They can provision that environment which has the same configuration of that of the customer's environment to deploy the right version of the software to that particular environment. So they're trying to fix the particular bug in their particular environment and then they're trying to match their configurations with that of the customer's environment. Now after they recreate the bug and fix it, they also use automated continuous testing to rigorously assess each and every chain. So basically they're following the complete pipeline process again. Now since the final steps in the process are fully automated to install these changes that are particularly correct. So I'm talking about the changes like you know we are recreating the bug and then fixing that particular bug. And if we have to solve this problem as quickly as possible, then we need continuous deployment. So as you just saw that all the routine changes still go through the continuous delivery flow, like again building the change and then getting all the tests done. Once that feature has passed all the tests, only then it is put onto the staging area where it can be deployed to the production servers. So in such situations, to make sure that all the environments are in sync, and provide the best quality of the product. So continuous deployment and continuous delivery are like vectors that have the same direction, but just with different magnitudes. So the goal stands the same. That is 
make software development and release process more faster and more robust. So guys, hopefully that distinguishes for you what continuous delivery is a capability that you must have and continuous deployment is an option you might choose to exercise based on the kind of the product you have. So in short, Continuous delivery is nothing but continuous integration plus the automated release of the software plus the manual deployment to the production and continuous deployment is continuous integration plus the continuous delivery and automated deployment to the production. That's all for today's session guys. Thank you and have a great day.